is MC Lars. Um, today I'm going to talk about hip hop as a sphere of influence. And I know a lot of you are probably looking at me thinking, what can this nerdy white guy teach me about hip hop, right? Let's admit it, that's what, that's what we're wondering. <laughs> um, let me give you a little bit of background. I studied literature at Stanford, and um, when I was... <laughs> I know we're at USC, but... I went, I went to Oxford to study Shakespeare, and over there I started writing these silly rap songs where I took Shakespeare's stories and I made beats on my laptop and I'd rap them and I convinced all these punk and indie bands to let me open for them. And that somehow led to a career where I've been making hip hop professionally touring for the past six years. And so when I told my parents I wanted to be a full-time rapper, they were a little shocked and surprised. <laughs> but. I, you know, I've opened for Snoop Dogg, I've opened for Nas, I collaborated with KRS-One, and uh, when I wake up every day, I have to pinch myself, because it's so weird that I get to rap for a living. So, we're going to talk a little bit about how hip-hop and Shakespeare are related. Now, a few weeks ago at Coachella, Tupac was brought back as a hologram. Good up for hologram, Tupac. <laughs> this was a really exciting moment, because hip-hop is a culture based on remixing the past. Another person who was famous for remixing the past is this guy, William Shakespeare. He, he would take old stories and recreate them for the popular culture of Elizabethan England. One of his most famous plays, Hamlet, written in 1600, was actually based on an old Danish play called Amlet from 1185. And when we look at Hamlet, we can see three elements of Shakespearean tragedy that apply to other cultures outside of hip hop, such as in the feud between Biggie and Tupac. We have, three we have three elements of what makes a Shakespearean tragedy. We have a hero of high standing, a tragic flaw, and a series of unfortunate events. In the case of Tupac and Biggie, Tupac had sold millions of records. He was holding it down for the West Coast in the 90s, and he got a lot of love, and he was really, really popular. His tragic flaw was his anger. His song Hit Him Up is just this vitriolic rant against Biggie and his whole crew that kind of led to a lot of bad animosity. And the third thing, the third element in the Shakespearean tragedy is unfortunate events. In the story of Biggie and Tupac, the media and the record labels really s helped fuel the East Coast, West Coast feud. And it ended in the tragic death of these two talented musicians in their 20s. So, it's really lame. <laughs> to, to put it lightly, very lame. Another example of Shakespearean tragedy, Macbeth. So if we take the archetype of the three elements of Shakespearean tragedy, we have a hero of high standing, Macbeth, who was a general in the army, a tragic flaw, Macbeth's tragic flaw was his ambition. He never was satisfied. He always wanted to have more. It wasn't enough that he became the glane of Thomas or whatever. He kept wanting to get more and more recognition. And so the unfortunate event in Macbeth is the interference of the supernatural. He's coming home from battle. He runs into these three witches who give him this twisted prophecy that ends in him ruining his whole life. And when we look at the meter of Macbeth, something that really struck me as a kid, when I was 16 in high school, I never really fit in. I kind of couldn't relate to people. It was, you know, I couldn't relate to girls. I couldn't play sports. I wasn't up on popular culture. So I spent a lot of time by myself on the weekends making music, making beats by myself. But it, so when I was reading Macbeth, I noticed the chant of the witches kind of fit a drum pattern that I'd built on reason. So if we look at the chant of the witches, double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble, the cadence of that this is a typical rhythm of a house beat. And I want to demonstrate that for you guys. This is a form called trochaic tetrameter. And we're going to see how it fits over the beat. So check it out. Imagine Macbeth is coming home, and he sees these witches around a cauldron, and they have something dark to tell him. That's the context for this rap. Here we go. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. Fair, it's foul, foul, it's fair. We must warn you, Macbeth, beware. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. Fair, it's foul, foul, it's fair. We must warn you, Macbeth, beware. Hip hop and Shakespeare, best friends. Thank you. So it fits. And if we want to understand hip hop as a cultural form, we need to take it back to the 70s. This man is Clive Campbell, a.k.a. DJ Cool Herc, the godfather of hip-hop. He grew up in Jamaica. He came to the Bronx in, the November of 16, in November of 1967, and he'd heard a lot of loud sound systems in Jamaica, the dance hall parties. So his idea was, okay, if I come to the Bronx and set up these sound systems, we can bring people together and have these really awesome parties. So the first ever hip-hop show, this is some trivia, you guys should write this date down. August 11th, 1973. 
1520 Sedgwick Avenue in the Bronx, Cool Herc threw, cool Herc threw this really cool back-to-school party. And what Cool Herc is credited for is inventing the breakbeat. And so the breakbeat is the part in the song where all the band cuts out and it's just the drum part. It's really the rhythmic backbone of the song, kind of like the rhythmic core of the song. A famous track that was used a lot in hip hop was James Brown's funky drummer beat. And you can hear that right now, I'm gonna play it for you. This is the backbeat of hip hop. It's been sampled by every rap group ever. One, two, three, four, get it! Who recognizes this beat, right? Go. <laughs> so what's important to note is that when we sample James Brown, that's a music in the 4-4 time signature. And so when we look at poetry, in music we have the beat. In poetry, we analyze rhythm with the feet. So anything that uses diameter, two feet, tetrameter, four feet, or octameter, eight feet, fits perfectly over the breakbeats. It's pretty cool. So another MC I want to introduce you guys to, who actually lived in the Bronx, but 125 years before Cool Herc, is our man Edgar Allan Poe. And uh, I want to show you guys something really cool. If we take the first line of his famous poem, The Raven, once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary. If we line it up with a James Brown breakbeat, we'll find a natural rhythm. But before we do it, I want to practice with you guys. So rap with me. I'm going to count you off. We're going to come in on four. We're all going to rap all three levels, Edgar Allan Poe. One, two, three, four. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary. TEDx is popping. That's awesome. <laughs> all right, so what we're going to do, we're going to take James Brown, as sampled by Public Enemy and Fight the Power. I'm gonna count you in and we're gonna wrap the first line of the Raven over Public Enemy. This is gonna be sick, check it out. The lyrics are there to help you out if you forgot them. Okay, you guys ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary. Give yourselves a round of applause. That was awesome. So when we, wanna, when we want to understand the cultural history of hip hop, we have to look at a very important archetype that plays into the whole history. This is the archetype of the griot, a West African tradition of the wandering storyteller who would go from, city, from village to village telling the stories of each culture using rhyme and music. And when we look at the griot, we can see how this influenced a lot of music with the work songs, with the slave trade, with gospel music, blues, and eventually rap. And it all goes back to the oral tradition of the griot. And when we want to analyze how oral culture is preserved, we need to analyze something called rhyme, which helps with the stickiness of it as a culture. So here's some neurobiology. So check it out. When we look at the brain, we can see how we use many different parts of our brain when constructing rhymes. When we recite a rhyme, we use the frontal lobe for organization and patterns, the temporal lobe, lobe for language decoding, and the cerebellum for fluidity and rhythm. When we're writing a rhyme, we use all three of these, but also the parietal lobe for writing and reading. And so that's why hip hop is a really good teaching tool, because it engages the entire brain, helps us with memory. And when we mix it with the magic of music, which gives us emotion and passion, it's awesome. We have the amygdala and the hippocampus. The hippocampus helps us with our memory, and the amygdala is associated with emotion. So that's some neurobiology and hip hop right there for you. Um, this semester, I teamed up with the Annenberg crew, and uh, Henry Jenkins, who's a friend of mine, he brought me on to work with the Play Group, which is the Participatory Learning and You Group. And there's a lab at the RFK School in Koreatown, which uses new media, transmedia education, to help students learn and process information in new ways. Henry Jenkins, in his research, he talks about how, in a hunter-gatherer society, students are encouraged to play with spears and bows and arrows as kids. That means, in an information society, we should be encouraging kids to use ideas and be free and play that way. So that's the point of the play group. A, uh, another mentor of mine, Lynn Goldfarb at the Rossier School of Education, in her theories of democratic... Give it up for Rossier School of Education. <laughs> she talks about subject relevancy and the importance of giving students a voice, the importance of making education democratic so that they can relate to the music and the information that they're processing and spit it back themselves. We set out on this really exciting mission to take an Edgar Allan Poe poem or story, turn it into a rap song, and make a music video for it. So in doing this, I wanted to relate to the students with artists that they understand. 
That's her Nan in the studio rocking the mic. And uh, one of the groups that a lot of the students listen to is Odd Future, a popular LA hip hop group that's blown up in the past few years. This is Tyler, the creator. And they, Odd Future don't self identify as horrorcore, but they kind of exist within this subgenre of hip hop that focuses on dark subject matter, gothic themes. And there are a lot of similarities when we look at Edgar Allan Poe and anti transcendentalism. There are a lot of similarities between Tyler, the creator, and Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> and so, in analyzing this work, we can kind of see the beauty in the darkness that connects the two. And so we studied Edgar Allan Poe's stories and we found similarities. We read his story, The Mask of the Red Death, which is the story of a man living in Europe who's trying to keep the plague out of his house. So he invites all his rich friends over. They have this cr crazy, incredible party. They wall off all the doors, but the plague shows up in the form of a skeleton Grim Reaper. We took this story and juxtaposed it to the Hollywood Hills. So an MC, a rapper, is having a huge, awesome party. He invites all his friends, but a rival shows up and crashes the party. So TEDxUSC, please get up for the RFK LA Hip Hop Collective. This is the Mask of the Red Death. They produced the song and made the video, and it's awesome. You guys can come out. Yeah. 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 The Red Death. We'll, we'll crash a party and it off a good ring and death to everybody. The Red Death. We'll crash a party and it off a good ring and death to everybody. Let me chase everywhere, drinks in the air, stuff in the air, run for the sin, where does he go, what does he go, is he really there, so let me just run away, and the thing I got now lies in my state, second hand got me elevated out of my place, death be waiting for me when I touch down, destiny come in the corner around, Decide whether I should not bounce And when I do, he's shadowing the ground Damn, he's here, should I pursue too? Running away from the voodoo Caught me up, no shoo shoo Whatever happens to be continued There's money, power, and the liquor Got me feeling kinda sick I'm in my way to the riches So I turn my life to switches I live in no regrets Cause the dollar's meaningless So never mind the less you my stress Look, it's but I'm here tonight Cause everything started alright With the wrath in my head But it's nothing they say So I keep a shardy What a party Cause I was deep for some money Not depending how it goes How my life should be money Money can be a saver Life with too much paper I see a killer at my eyes I'm willing when I die I feel it creep and crawl when the reaches break the dawn The liquor got the best for me, waste of how big Cause my life's a mess, just try to test in the game I'm a boss, pushing like Rick Ross Ain't no matter the cost, so I pop another bottle Mixed to a million and model The red death will kill any human of interest Like an abortion is taking the souls of unborn infants I'm seeing dead people dancing, right from my eyes Celebrating what's when they were alive It was a house party and death had arrived no hoodie or a side, just don't underestimate me cause I'm grim Kick me out and I'll just find a little bite to get, get back, back in. in Now is a good time to confess to God to all your sins Cause I'm rolling with the top legends, sipping juice and gin Now nah, you can't cheat me out of this game Cause I'm feeling insane and my brain popping blood out of your veins Making it fall like rain Jumps take Nova Kane just to ease the pain I hear a girl crying, she's probably hiding That's enough time to get hey, blood and guts hey, flying hey, The Red Death, we'll, we'll crash your party And then I'll go good, good, bring that to everybody The Red Death, we'll crash your party And then I'll go good, bring that to everybody The Red Death, we'll crash your party And then I'll go good, bring that to everybody The Red Death, we'll crash your party And then I'll go good, bring that to everybody Get up to the RFK LA Hip Hop Collective. Woo! You guys are so awesome. You made me so proud. Nice work. You killed it. That was sick. Edgar Allan Poe in hip hop right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>